Friends, perhaps my blind spot is I still believe there are sensible men. For years I have been screaming about the defective minds in our midst. The sharp, candid minds seem non-existent, and if they do exist, the government most likely has already snagged them for their use. Our social order is now essentially secular in character. Hardly a voice claims our laws and nation are divinely given. This has generated a country of citizens who develop their own lives. Our time has not been fascinated by some kind of mystery. We are hanging on to a petrified form which has dried up the deep mysteries of life. Our minds today are not drawn to something deeper than ourselves. Christian leaders who should be presenting the fascinating mysteries of Christ have blocked this light. For over 40 years, the cross of Christ has not been the message, but a new world order, Armageddon, Antichrist, the mark of the beast, Babylon the great, end time prophecy, the last days, Christian persecution. The question is, what is the use of pointing all this out? Enter H.G. Wells. Wells, long before the prophecy teacher, spoke of a world state. He wrote a book entitled Guide to the New World. In it, he was fundamentally for human rights and had an anti-totalitarian philosophy as a thesis. His gospel at that time was formed on the basis of Hitler advancing in the world. He, with his visionary gifts, saw air power as a possible world power. So he proposed a federal world control of the air. The grand problem with this idea is that at that time there were five great military powers in the world. For any to submit to such an idea was far-fetched. The Third Reich was marching through Europe and for any one power to be willing to bring the world into a federal or world state control of air power had one problem, Hitler. It was ironic for Hitler himself was seeking a totalitarian world state. H.G. Wells was trying to reshape the world through writing, science, intellectualism, while Hitler was trying to reshape it through military power. I point this out because this parallels our time. The Brits did not sensibly seek to understand what Wells and even George Orwell were writing about. They sheltered themselves from taking their writers seriously. The voices of their time were phenomenal, but because the English, who were a world power, decided to settle on their lees and enjoy life, decided to set aside common sense and the reality of a world rapidly changing around them, it cost them dearly. Their nation was attacked, their fiscal economics became a ruin, and they lost their world power. So the danger of our time, the very thought that our nation is untouchable. Enter President Trump. Much of the nation consider him an absurdity. His ideals they see as a road map of the past. He has become the principal swashbuckling villain to his opponents. His recurring theme is to make America great again, which constantly agitates those who manifestly hate him. If one really looks, you can see that Trump is a reactionary seeking to restore a disorderly past. He has a planned form on how he wants to make America a utopia. Trump is trying to bring back history, but political criticism has distanced him from Congress. It has distracted him. But in the long run, it has not kept him from the loss of power. Trump, however, is not preaching a Republican gospel. People who support him may be Republican, but he is touting nationalism. A society with a set of values contradictory to the developed ideals of America, which are the product of American progressive current events. This is his gospel, and he has enlisted the religious in his march for the future. Historically, what aligns itself with nationalism is war, religion, monarchy, the elite. Generally, because education of the American citizen is a cell phone, 
a computer, the internet, or television. He or she is incapable of understanding that nationalism, religious bigotry, feudal power are far more powerful forces than anyone realizes. What troubles most people is the pass through Trump has come marching right into the present. Kipling warns of voices of control and military glory which Trump represents in all forms. And what is even more of a historical note, note he suggests that these are a form of patriotism which dictators of the past have drummed into the minds of their followers. What frightens people is this is the philosophy of nations of the past, nations who sought to dominate the world. Trump seems to be writing along the lines of past empires who sought imperialistic control. The current trend in Washington is not to legislate with Trump. And their claim is he is uncooperative or stern or unrealistic in his demands. A big part of the snub by Washington is Trump has absolutely no political experience. Many believe he does not belong in the presidency. And to date, six men who were part of his presidential com campaign have been indicted. Countless others have left his administration or have resigned a post. A long, hard look displays the indicted as picks by the president, and the resignations resemble the inability to work with or unite people in a common cause. This adds more fuel to the already disgruntled in Washington. On top of these facts is the wielding executive order pen, which overrides any legislative decisions Congress refuses to listen to or cooperate with. All the more angering at Congress who sees the president as illegitimate. No matter how you look at it, Trump should be taken seriously and not shrugged off as some comic lunatic who will fade away with the ghosts of the past. He has set a set of ideas he wants to accomplish and he has made it clear that he not only wants his name in the history book, but he wants his legacy to be known for reshaping America and its politics. And now enter the New World Order. If a New World Order is to come to fruition, there is one big obstacle in its way, and that is the United States. The United States must be eliminated, exterminated, or become the catalyst of the New World Order. One scenario is whether the United States is Babylon the Great in your Bible or will become Babylon the Great, or will end up like Babylon the Great in the Bible, reaping the wrath of God. No one knows. We are told Babylon the Great will burn within one hour, and if this is the United States, then quite obviously it would be eliminated as world power. In order for the United States to be the catalyst of the new world order, the country would have to corrupt its constitution and democracy changing the nation from a democratic society to a totalitarian democratic tyranny, ruling over its citizens with technological advances. Most likely these are advances we have not developed yet, or these advances exist and remain hidden from the American public. Now the New World Order, the Antichrist, is the future of the world, perhaps the far future. Will it be in our lifetime? I do not know. Yet our moral element in society suggests the New World Order is not only present, but it is on its way to power in our time. We see the world, our country, and President Trump, most likely unaware, showing shades of the New World Order. It is in our country and in the world's DNA, so to speak. Now the President wants to reshape America and make it great again, make it an aristocratic nation, or a power that rules over other nations. This is the same philosophy we see Antichrist will, Antichrist will adopt for his empire. Right now we see Trump seeking complete control over all facets of American life. Without legislation, ruling by executive order, isolating the country from foreign invasion, and illegal border crossing, just to name a few as his optimal ideals of ruling power. His political philosophy has created a war between democracy and the ruling class of Congress. 
executive order without the due process of legislation is the political ideal of this administration. This has led people to believe he seeks a totalitarian rule of the country. Certainly no legislative power suggests what people tend to believe, that his intentions are to be adhered to despite objections of our representatives in Congress. Proposing totalitarianism as a rule of the nation, not legislation. Interestingly enough, Antichrist will implement this type of rule and control, as no one will have the power to challenge Antichrist rule. So the American people today are in the same predicament. They have no power to object due to executive order rule, as the people in the end times will ha hand themselves over to a philosophy they do not agree with, so we here in the United States are subject to the same power. Our voices being shut out due to the fact of executive order. We have no recourse through our representatives in government due to the fact our representatives as well have been shut out by the executive order pen. A rule of power not only this president but previous presidents have used to force upon the nation their personal philosophy despite the opposition of sound judgment and voices of concern. When the new world order arrives in the world, everyone will hand their lives over to a new master or masters. With our democracy, now there is the ability of free and equal thought, even though the powers that be are slowly choking this fact, as I have pointed out. The new world order or the Antichrist will rule with the control of the world as an ideal of no compromise, putting an end someday to the democratic process. The executive order pin is a promontory sign of the one-man rule over the world. The added change of Antichrist is he will demand to be worshipped, making the new world order a religious, tyrannical, dictatorial government we do see Trump encouraging and Im implementing with evangelicalism as part of his administration. It is not only for votes, but his affiliation with a corrupt Christian order without a cross. Is there not any understanding with the followers of the prosperity gospel that the death of Christ involved money and political affiliation? Thus the end of the cross, self-sacrifice, humbleness, and an arrogance that cast lots to wear the robe of Christianity. Trump's religious affiliation is with the political televangelist evangelicals of prosperity. As the saying goes, like attracts like. In this case, money, prosperity, power, celebrity. From a distance and in many forms, Trump's affiliation is secretly a religious democratic administration with its own values, not the values of the common citizens of the country. The worship of Trump by evangelical is the very same worship Antichrist will demand in his time. My friends, we are reaching an end here of time, but let me go on. The governing powers we see in America show the capability evolving beyond to a police state. A national idea ID is most likely the future. Facial recognition is already being used in 29 states. Databases have been increased and been increasing more and more, giving information on citizens. Just recently, Delta Airlines had implemented facial recognition, and it is part of the new world order that shall be coming in the future. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.